Today I'm going to show you what's inside of your car's cooling system and how it works to cool your car's engine. So here I've got the entire cooling system laid out for this engine here starting with the radiator fan up at the front and the entire cooling circuit for the engine block so we're going to have a closer look at each component. Now we're going to start here with the radiator and it's basically a giant heat exchanger that brings hot coolant in through here it gets cooled off through the cooling fans and then cool coolant flows back through here into the engine. At the front of the engine we have the pulley that turns the fan that's driven off of the crankshaft. We have the fan coupler and of course the fan blade which is mechanically driven on this vehicle. Now this vehicle also has an auxiliary electrical fan for the AC condenser. And finally we reach the engine block which is where all the combustion and heat is coming from. We've got the cooling circuit that goes around the engine to cool it off. At the bottom here we have the oil cooler. We've also got the water pump over here which is powered by the timing chain and we have the thermostat housing over here which serves as the water inlet for the coolant. Now looking from the top here we have the cool side that comes from the heater core and the warm side that goes to the heater core. We've also got these two smaller lines here that warm up the throttle body and then at the back of the engine head we have the two exit ports for the hot coolant as it comes out of the engine to be cycled back around to the radiator. Now the cooling system is essentially a closed loop control system controlled through the thermostat. When the thermostat is closed the coolant is simply going to cycle through the cylinder block and then come back around through the bypass hose to the thermostat housing again to be cycled around until it warms up. And the thermostat is going to open up and that's going to allow the coolant to go through the engine block, cool it off and then cycle back around to the radiator to get cooled off before it goes back through the thermostat with auxiliary lines going to the oil cooler, the heater core and the throttle body. Now I'm going to start on the cool side of the engine here where cool coolant comes from the radiator and flows into the thermostat that housing before entering the engine block. Now we have three lines here, one coming from the heater core, the other one being the bypass line, and the other one coming from the oil cooler that all feed into this thermostat housing. Now if I remove the thermostat housing, you can see we have the thermostat inside of here that is responsible for controlling the flow of coolant through the radiator and the engine block depending on coolant temperature. Now when the thermostat is in its normally closed position, the engine coolant inside of the engine is going to circulate and the hot side is going to come back out over here where it's supposed to go to the radiator but instead it's actually going to be bypassed through this hose over here and fed back around to the coolant inlet over here and when the coolant reaches about 82 degrees celsius this thermostat is going to open up and allow coolant to flow from the radiator through the engine and then back around again to get cooled off but there's also this secondary valve over here that's going to seat against the surface to block off this bypass hose. Looking further inside you can see that the coolant is going to flow down inside of the engine block over to the water pump cavity over here. Now how the thermostat works is we have this control rod inside of this wax assembly here that's encased in coolant. Now when the engine coolant reaches 82 degrees Celsius the wax inside of this membrane here is going to start to melt and give away to the spring pressure and that's going to cause this control rod to move up which hence is going to cause this valve here to unseat from the surface allowing coolant to push through it and go into the engine block and cool down the engine. I'm just going to get my wife to lend me some boiling water here in this container so we can demonstrate how this thermostat works. Thanks wife. You're and now we're going to put this thermostat in the hot water to see how it works. And now if I lift this thermostat out you can see that the thermostat valve is lifted off from the body over here and there's a slight gap. Now we're going to cut open the thermostat to see what's inside. And we can see here's what the thermostat looks like. We have the control rod over here and we have the wax inside of here. So I'm just going to remove this little C-clip from the top here and that relieves the spring pressure from the control rod and I can remove this upper plate and the upper spring seat and then we have this other plate here followed by the main spring. So here's a close look at that wax membrane. We have the outside part here which contains the wax and then the inside part which is just shoved in here and when the wax melts, this rod here is going to either push in or push out depending on the spring pressure. Now we're going to cut open the wax member to see what's inside. Ouch, it's hot! And here you can clearly see the wax membrane on the inside here. Still kind of soft from the grinder. Now coolant is going to come from the thermostat housing down to the center cavity of this water pump here where we have a centrifugal pump driven by a timing chain. Now the centrifugal pump works by sucking in coolant through the center here and these veins here fling it to the outside of the housing over here as it's being turned so much so that it creates enough flow to push the coolant into the engine block and keep the coolant flow going through the entire cooling system. We also got this little weep hole on the water pump here that'll bleed on any excess coolant that's passed through the 
seals here down behind the timing chain. Now I'm going to start disassembling the cooling system from the engine head here so we can have a closer look at how the coolant flows inside of the engine itself. Pull off the engine head here. Now here's a closer look at the cooling circuit inside the engine block itself starting at the bottom here with the thermostat. Coolant is then going to flow in past the water pump and then enter the engine through the engine heads on either side. It then shares that cooling jacket with the engine block itself before it exits back out the head itself at the back of the engine and then cycles back around to the radiator to get cooled. We've also got a hot line that runs to the heater underneath the dashboard and that cycles back around to the cool side of the circuit. So with the engine head turned upside down here we can clearly see the path of the coolant from the thermostat housing over here as it goes through this slit over here and then into the center of this water pump. Now from the center of the water pump the coolant then makes its way over to these cooling jackets that surround the pistons here to cool off these combustion chambers because this is where the majority of the heat is generated in the engine. Now the cooling jacket also shares its coolant with the coolant jackets that are built into the engine head here. The coolant is also flowing through the engine head cooling off all of these valves here especially because you have hot exhaust gases that flow through this head. Now warmed coolant from the engine jackets and the head is actually collected through this port over here where it goes through a coolant pipe out to the radiator. Now on the side of the engine block just off of this water jacket here we have the block heater and that's responsible for taking household electricity and warming a pocket of coolant over here to keep the engine slightly warm so it's easier to start and will warm up faster in the depths of winter. Now I'm going to chop open the block heater to see what's inside. So here we can see the block heater, it's basically a giant resistor element. Now on the side of the block here you can clearly see where the end of the water jacket is and that's pretty much the lowest point in the cooling system. Anything that's below that is actually just relying on engine oil to keep all of these bearings cool. We've also got a coolant drain on the side of the block that corresponds to the bottom of the water jacket. Now shortly after the warm coolant exits out of the engine head here, it heads through this tube past the coolant temperature sensor which tells the ECU how to adjust the air fuel ratio to update that little gauge on the dashboard and also to turn on any cooling fans if they're electronic. Now this little cap on the hose going to the heater core here is just for air bleeding as it's the highest point in the system. Now the purpose of engine coolant is actually to raise the boiling point and lower the freezing point of your car's coolant because normal engines actually operate in a wider temperature band than just normal water itself. It's also based on ethylene glycol which is great for preventing any corrosion inside of your engine. And here we have the mechanical fan clutch which is driven off of the accessory drive system over here. At the front here we have the fan which would mount to this body and when the clutch is locked the entire thing would rotate to cool the engine. However when the engine is cool there's going to be some slip allowed so that the fan does not rotate and overcool the engine. So how this works is we have a thermal spring which is made of a bimetallic material with two different coefficients of expansion. So when heat is applied here this thermal spring is actually going to start to turn and that's going to open up a valve on the inside to activate this clutch. These are pretty rusted shut so we're going to have to cut this open. So now if we open this up we can see what we have inside. We have basically three pieces. The input shaft over here we have the output part that's attached to the fan and then we have this piece in the middle here that locks up to the inside and the outside. Now essentially we have fluid that's in this reservoir over here when the temperature is cool and through centripetal force it'll want to be pushed to the outside of this chamber inside of here. The thermal spring which is attached to this little valve here is going to open up when the temperature warms up and that's going to fling all of this fluid out into the rest of the fan clutch assembly through these little holes over here and it's going to fill up these little tracks. Now these little tracks here are going to be interweaved with the tracks on the input shaft and the shear force between the fluid from such a very tight gap is going to essentially lock up this input shaft to this output part and that's going to turn the fan assembly all together. Now let's see what happens when we apply a little bit of heat. You can see that the spiral is starting to slowly expand on the outside. I guess the spring is not getting hot enough in this propane torch. Now this whole thing is super hot but you can see how the liquid has kind of melted and made its way around the outside. So it's actually a little bit less viscous when warm. Now when the temperature cools down, the fluid's gonna make its way back out of these channels here into the radial channels, back down into the center chamber over here where this valve is gonna close and keep the fluid contained. Next up we come to the radiator. Now while it's a giant heat exchanger for the engine coolant, we've also got another heat exchanger with the form of an AC condenser that sits in front of it. So I'm just gonna have to part these two. Remove that condenser and that reveals a really dirty radiator. I got some transmission fluid dripping out the bottom. I'm just going to use my wife's old dress here to wipe that off. Now on the back here I'm just going to remove this fan shroud. I'm just going to use my brother's old 
toothbrush here to clean up this radiator. Now the rate at which the heat can be transferred through a heat exchanger is governed by this thermodynamic equation which is equal to a coefficient multiplied by the surface area multiplied by the differences in the temperature between the inlet and the outlet. Therefore if the temperatures are greatly different or if the surface area is really large we're going to have a much faster heat transfer rate. Now while the radiator is very important as a heat exchanger into the system it's also important to hold pressure in the system through its radiator cap because that increases its heat capacity and its resistance to boiling up to 15 psi. Now if I remove the radiator cap you can see that it's got this rubber seat here that seats inside of the plastic tank at the top here to build pressure inside of the radiator. Now once the pressure hits about 15 psi the spring is going to compress and that's going to release some of the coolant into the coolant overflow reservoir over here. Now since coolant expands with temperature we have this giant reservoir here that's here to take up any extra coolant. Now if the cooling system is way over pressurized or if it's overfilled we have a little vent at the top of the cooling jug to prevent the whole system from exploding. Now once the coolant starts to cool back down this additional valve on the top of the radiator cap here is going to open up and that's going to introduce a vacuum to the cooling system sucking the coolant back into the radiator. Well, now while the radiator passes through engine coolant we've also got a separate circuit on the bottom here to cool the transmission oil through these two lines over here. At the top of the radiator has a collection tank where it collects all the coolant and evenly distributes it through the fins. Once it reaches the bottom it collects again at the bottom runs through the transmission cooler and then back out to the lower radiator hose. Now I'm going to chop open the radiator to see what's inside. I'm going to use my wife's dress to wipe up that coolant again. Now I'm going to chop the radiator horizontally so we can have a closer look at the fin. So taking a look at the top section of the radiator where the radiator cap is we have this top tank here and it's hollow inside it's got little tubes inside of there and then connected between the tubes we have this little zigzag pattern of fins that aid to conduct heat away from the tubes as the radiator fan passes breeze through this assembly. Now I've opened up some of the tubes on the section here so you can see just how the radiator fluid will travel from the top to the bottom. Now taking a look at the bottom of the radiator here we have yet another plastic tank that houses the cool coolant. We've also got this heat exchanger on the inside side here for the transmission cooler that hooks up here. It brings in transmission oil in through this heat exchanger over here in through these small little tubes and it's separate from the coolant itself before it heads back out to the transmission. Now the radiator hoses carry coolant throughout the system. Now they're typically preformed and are also reinforced so that they don't collapse on themselves under high or low pressure. Now I'm going to chop this open to see what's inside. And looking at the cross section you can see the nylon cords that are inside of this hose to prevent it from collapsing. Now the oil cooler is essentially a small little heat exchanger that exchanges heat from the warm engine oil to the cooler coolant that flows through it. Now I'm going to cut open the oil cooler to see what's inside. The coolant essentially will come in through here and be traveling around this thin little channel all the way around the cooler before exiting out here. That way the coolant circuit on the outside is separated from the oil circuit on the inside. So from the thermostatic fan coupling to the thermostat itself, that's pretty much how the cooling system in your car works. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and subscribe for more videos just like this one.